I know I was one of these kids. Do you have kids that hate math? See, I loved math growing up. For some, math homework, though, can be a dreaded battle, as Shauna knows. But in today's fresh idea, this may help your kids change their tune. Here's Mark Cabell. The circumference of a circle divided by the diameter of a circle. Brian Fetzer loves mathematics. I think mathematics is fun. It's it's joyous, it's art, it's beauty. Fetzer's been teaching at the university level for nearly two decades, and he's always surprised by the number of students who hate math. So now he's singing some different tunes to try and change all that. Fetzer's taking a break from teaching to share the music of mathematics. Third tone of the scale, then the first tone of the scale, then the fourth tone of the scale, and so on and so forth. So the melody is actually a digit of pride. As complex as it may seem, he hopes these songs will make math simple for kids. I like the pie song because I didn't know what pie meant before we came to our school and did that. The math concerts are becoming popular at elementary schools. They came home and said how much fun it was, and they've been singing the pie song all the time. In fact, they enjoyed it so much, these kids came to watch Fetzer at the fair. It's great and it's cool. Fetzer says he has songs for all math levels. So they're for young people, they're for older people, they're for people who have been frightened of mathematics, they're for people who have always been intrigued by math. While making math a hit can be a difficult undertaking, these kids may be proof it is possible. Because he sings cool songs. That's how I learned my times tables. They had my third grade teacher had a, had a record or something. It's like a local version of Schoolhouse Rock. It is. It's perfect. Bit. So you see, I can write music with numbers. And a lot of musicians think in terms of numbers. Well, what if we take a specific number, like pi, and write a song with the digits of pi? Could we do that? Yes. Certainly we could do that. See, all we do have to do is number these tones. One, two, three, four. And so wherever we see a three, we put the three tone. Wherever we see a one, we put the one tone. Wherever we see a four, we put the four tone, the one tone, the five tone, the nine tone, and the two tone. Well, what does that sound like? Well, let's, let's listen to what that sounds like. Point one four, one five, nine two. These numbers they begin pi. Three point one four, one five, nine two. Like finding some bright keys to the sky. Three point one four, one five, nine two. The numbers they go on and on. Oh. On and on, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on, forever. 3.14, 1, 5, 9, 2, these numbers they begin. Archimedes, Euler, too, Isaac, Newton, through and through, oh, Einstein, Gauss, Ramanushan, all saw windows that opened with 3.14, 1592, these numbers they begin high. Oh, oh. These numbers they begin I 3.14 1592 
Like finding some bright keys to the sky. Made musical, you've got to hear it to believe this one just a little bit later. And a Utah College math professor sings his lessons. One, five, nine, two, these numbers they begin. He says that helps the students remember the numbers. That story's next. How much do you remember from your school math classes? Can you recall the digits of pi or even what pi <laughs> is? The new special of Shelley Ostello reports on one college math professor who has an unusual way of teaching and helping students remember what they learn. What's this? Sheet music in a math class? That's right. And the song that goes with it. 3.141592 These numbers they begin pi 3.14 one, five, nine, two, like finding some bright keys to the sky. Professor Brian Fetzer composed this song. The numbers of pi correspond to musical notes, and that is the melody they make. Fetzer says many people are intimidated by math. He's found that the arts make math more meaningful. A mathematician who uh, uses his analytical abilities to create great art creates better art. And what occurred to me is that the arts could be used to teach mathematics. So he uses visual arts, literature, and music to help students appreciate the beauty and structure of math and remember it. It's a lot better than just hearing a professor just lecture on for an hour and a half. I was able to remember the, the full seven digits without any hesitation at all. Um, it's a very catchy tune, and it, uh, it did help learn. I don't struggle as much anymore. I feel confident. When I come in and, and take a test, I feel like I know that I'll do well. Okay, remember the Pythagorean theory? The square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the two adjacent sides. Fetzer says he sees the beauty of math in art and tries to share that with his students. Shelley Osterlo, Eyewitness News catchy, isn't it? Yeah. Brian Fetzer is a math professor at the University of Utah and Salt Lake Community College. Had he been my teacher, I might have done better in math. Hmm? And singing. And singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point there. If we can write a melody with simply numbers, 